we're going to just move on here, take a look at some practice. Okay. So here's what happens. We're working in the world of grade 11 right now, something that you guys should be familiar with. Parabolas. So I'm going to do one more with you in parabolas. But here's what grade 12 starts to look like. Okay? They know that you can do equations in a graphing calculator. They're not interested in seeing that you can punch something into your graphing calculator. So they tend to do funny things like these. Okay? These graphs, which are very hard to put into a graphing calculator, most of you probably wouldn't know how to do it. So therefore, you're going to have to do it by hand. You're going to have to show that you know how to do it. So before we start, let's just talk it out. Okay? This graph here. Can anybody tell me, in English, what's going to happen to this graph? And before anybody answers, I want you to say it in your head. Okay, you might not be brave enough to stick your hand up yet, but I want you to say it in your head. This graph is going to move and say it. Left, up, right, up, down. Okay? So let's get an answer here and see if we all agree. Oh, excellent. Okay, um, I haven't heard from Alan yet, so... Uh, one up, two right. One up and two right is correct. So that's the way we want to think about it. Forget that it's a parabola. We're just going to take that point. Move it one up and two to the right. So one up puts me here. Oops. Let me get that again. Oh, it's cranky. One second. Okay, so if I move this one up and two over, then I'll end up here. Okay? If I move it, uh, let's take another point. Here's an easy one right there. If I move this one up one and two over, here's where I end up. Okay, and if I do this to enough points, then I'm going to see where the graph has moved. So minimum, you want to pick at least three. So let's pick another one, like maybe this, um, which goes one up and two over. So that gives me some idea that the new parabola will look about like this. And I would transfer it now to my good copy, which is here, if I was going to be marked on it. Yeah, it's not a very good, good copy. I swear that I draw better than the Wiimote. So oh, there, that's not bad. OK, let's see if I can do a, a halfway decent job. There we go. So this would be a little bit better. Okay. A little bit better. <laughs> okay, so if we said we're moving right by 2, that means H has the value 2. We're moving up by 1. K has the value 1. Those are the ones we just talked about as the length. Okay, so the last one here, this one moves. How does it move left, right? Left one is correct, and down two. Good. So if we move left one, it's going to be a negative one. Down two. So it's going to be left one, down two. There's where that point moves to. And if I pick another one, like I had here, I'll use a different color. If I go from this point, left one, down two. And I go from this point, left one, down two. And that's where I'm going to find it when I do my good copy. So my good copy will be at um, here and here. Okay, and a very wiggly parabola. So that's what it'll look like now that it's been moved. So your job now is to do this in a most general purpose way, which is with shapes. Okay. So um, hopefully, you know, these lines here are all one tick mark. If you can't read the numbers, it's all one tick mark. But uh, I want you to move these graphs around. Okay, I'm going to give you five minutes to do four graphs. That should be more than enough time if you get the hang of it. Make sure you still say it in your head. It's important to talk it out and say this graph moves three left, one up, whatever it is that it's doing. Okay, so let's uh, catch up here. I'm sure you guys are ahead of me on this one. When I look at this, that's going to be three left and two down. So three left, two down. That means each of these points, that's where I'm going to focus. If you just do the corners, that tells me where they're going to go. So three to the left and two down. Okay, that basically moves the middle to one of those corners. So that means I'm here. And I mean, at that point, I guess you can draw the rest of the triangle, but I might as well. Let's see here. Three to the left. Too fast. Just a second. 
let's put them back. Okay, so three down. Oh, that's why I went two down. There we go. So thank you, Ellis. It's actually here. Okay, so that means I go from ten, three over, two down. Let's go here. That's why my triangle looks so funny. Okay, so that's one nice thing about this unit is sometimes when you look at all the math on your page, you don't know where you made your mistake. But in this one, the picture needs to look like the picture you started with, it's just been moved around. So uh, it's a little easier to check your work. Okay, in this one here, we move one to the right and two up. So uh, maybe I'll do this in black. One to the right and two up. One to the right and two up. One to the right and two up. So it roughly looks like this. Okay, so roughly that's where you should see your triangles reappear, hopefully much nicer than mine look. Again, it's the Wii mode, it's not me. Okay, so we'll do the, the last one here. Um, the key points I'm going to look at, these are the points I'm going to be concerned about when I do the transformation. It's going to be uh, these vertices, these corners, those spots right there. Okay, so somebody say it for me. How does this one move? Yes, that's a three though. Three oh, to the sorry. left and two up. Yes. <laughs> so three to the left means that's a negative three and two up. Okay, so let's move those points. Three to the left, two up. That puts the first one here. Oh, there is one. Yeah, there is. Three to the left. Oh, that was to the right. Three to the left. One, two, three to the left and two up. So now I'll quickly transfer my good copy. Three to the left, put the point there. The next one was all the way up here, there, there, and slightly off to the right. So something like that. Okay. Maybe I've got the, the, the jitters today. I'm nervous about our first day. Okay, so this is three to the right, down one. So when I take the points, Three to the right, down one. 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 And finally, there we go. That one fit. Beautiful. I'll see if I can do my best. One here. One here. Here. And last one there. So if x, y is on the graph and I put both transformations on there, then that means both of them go x plus h, y plus k. Okay. We can combine them. Left and right does not affect up and down, so you can just combine them straight away. Okay, No worries about that. They don't affect each other. Okay. So the last thing we need to talk about is a gentle introduction to a topic which causes a little bit of grief, but on a scale of 1 to 10, it's like a 2. It's kind of like an itch. It's just kind of annoying. Um, there are questions we need to deal with um, that handle this in our course. Today is about the, the, the most difficulty that you'll see in Math 12, but we're going to build it up for the rest of the unit just so you get to practice it. Okay? So basically, instead of thinking about it where all the transformations are on one side of your equation, right, that's handy to put into a graphing calculator because everything is on one side. Um, we're going to do what's handier to talk about the transformations and to get an equation. So in this form, this is better for equations. That's why we do it. And the one that we worked with so far today, like this, this is better for graphs. So the idea is, 
we want to move all the vertical to one side. So we're going to put like a border here. If you're vertical, you belong on this side. If you're horizontal, you belong on that side. That will be the case no matter how we change up the transformation in the rest of the unit. All vertical to one side, all horizontal to the other. That's the only difference really between graphing when you want everything on one side because you're plugging it into a calculator or an equation where we'd like vertical on one side, horizontal on the other. Okay. So here's what we just did. This is good for a graph because everything is on one side. For an equation, I'm going to make an equivalent one. I'm going to move this, which is vertical, to the vertical side, the side that has y. So that means it's going to become y minus 2 equals root x minus 1. Okay. So one thing you'll notice here, if I'm moving right 1 and up 2, these are the numbers that I get. Remember, there's that tricky one that has to be flipped because horizontal can cause careless mistakes. One thing that's nice about the horizontal, uh, sorry, the, about the transformation notation is it's the, it's the same for both. You flip both signs. This would be still, sorry, this would be still a 1. Let's just get rid of this here. This would still be a 1, and this would be a 2 because it's the same equation, but I flip both signs. So there's only one rule to remember. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to remember separate rules. Okay. But here's where it becomes useful in an equation. Okay. Somebody gives you this graph. This is what you're starting with. And, uh, oops, got a, okay. Um, oh, she's back. Okay. One sec. Okay. So someone gives you this graph and they tell you they're going to translate it three units to the left and two units up. Okay. The problem is we don't have the new equation yet. We'd like one so that we could do the graph. Okay. So if I move three units to the left and two units up, can we write something that goes like this? That's the first job is can we go from this to putting the transformation into these blanks here. Can you fill in those two blanks for me if I move three to the left and two up? How does three to the left affect the graph? Yeah, it's going to be a plus three. So this one, if I put three to the left, that's what I, one of the blanks is that's missing. What if I move it two up? Yeah, there's going to be a plus two here. So now I know what the transformation looks like. It goes from regular to change. Okay. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to move it so that all the verticals on one side. So I'm going to get y minus two equals f of x um, plus three. So all I did was move vertical to one side, horizontal to the other. And the reason that this is helpful is this tells me how to change the equation. Okay, it's not obvious, but what this says is this is what y used to be. This is what x used to be. So y is going to become y minus 2, and x is going to become x plus 3. So that's the replacement we make in the equation. It's going to become y minus 2, because it used to be y, equals x plus 3 squared, it used to be x, plus 2, x plus 3, plus 1. So if I wanted to simplify it a little bit, all I would do, this is good enough for my graphing calculator, and that's enough to graph it. Okay? But it's not obvious when you look here that this is the same graph I started with, shifted 3 to the left and 2 up. Okay. That takes a bit of practice. Don't worry. I, we always get lost the first time we do it. Don't worry. Just make sure it's in your notes, and we will keep practicing this.